Throughout Hey Arnold Month, we went in depth about Arnold's origins, had discussion on two of the show's holiday specials, and dedicated over 40 minutes to the long and convoluted history of the Jungle Movie. Now it's time to do one of the most challenging tasks any content creator has to do, a countdown. Deciding on which of the 100 episodes of the series are my all-time favorite. This was one of the most difficult countdown lists I've done since the Pete and Pete episodes list and the Avatar The Last Airbender list, the latter of which I'll remake sometime in the future. It was so hard to choose what episode would be on my list that I knew from the very beginning that a top 10 list won't do this time. This time, I doubled it to 20. Even with that number increase, it was still very hard to choose. But regardless, it's finally time to give you my top 20 episodes of Hey Arnold. Now keep in mind, if there are any episodes that doesn't appear, or if you think an episode should have been ranked higher or lower, just remember that this is my personal opinion. With that said, let's begin. Number 20, Eugene Goes Bad. We're starting things off with an episode about the klutzy yet optimistic kid, Eugene Horowitz. Pretty much every single episode, we either see him happy and cheerful with looking at the bright side, or we see him go through catastrophic and painful events that ends him in a cast or at the hospital. But here's an episode where we see Eugene in a different light. Eugene, Arnold, and Gerald are watching TV when a program called The Abdicator begins. Eugene is a huge fan of the Abdicator, and he believes that he's a real hero. He's even more excited when the people behind the TV show are going to be shooting an episode in their city. Arnold and Gerald try to convince Eugene that the Abdicator isn't a real hero, but just an actor playing as one. But Eugene doesn't believe them. The next day, they head over to where a scene of the TV show is being filmed, and Eugene is excited of seeing the Abdicator in action. But then he realizes that the actor who's playing the abdicator not only doesn't do his own stunts, but he's also whining and complaining. Where is my lunch? Where is my apricot juice? Where is my mushroom brioche? Come on, people. I've been working since 11 o'clock, and this suit is still too hot and confining. What do I have to do to get some help around here? I mean, the last time I looked in the trades, I was still a major television star. Eugene confronts the actor, telling him that the way he was acting was not how the abdicator should be, and he was looking up to him as a hero. Seeing who the actor truly was, Eugene decides that there is no reason to be good anymore and decides to become bad. A young kid who's been looking up to Eugene becomes disappointed that he turned out to be a bad kid. So he starts questioning to himself on how he should act. As for the actor, he thought about what Eugene had told him and felt guilty that he didn't portray the way he should have. This episode is a great showcase that although you may not know it, there's at least one person that does look up to you as a role model. Sometimes you have to be careful on what you say or how you act because there are people out there that want to be just like you. But sometimes you have to understand that just because you see a person act nice on TV, on a movie, or even online, they may not be like that in real life. Just remember that at the end, they're human beings that aren't perfect and they do make mistakes. But in our post-Facebook and Twitter world, where celebrities are more accessible than ever before, it makes it even more tough for both the fans and the actors. It's also a really interesting episode that portrays Eugene in a really unique way. Seeing Eugene not act like his usual self was pretty refreshing. It also has some really good jokes and subtle references. One of which was Eugene pulling on the fire alarm, which was based off a previous episode in the series, which may or may not be on this list. Then there's the TV show that the young kid wants to watch right before his bedtime. I'm supposed to be in bed by 8.30, right after my favorite show, Yo Ernest. Yo Ernest is actually a reference to Hey Arnold. It's really nice to see Eugene not as a jinx, or as a geek, or as a goof, but a hero. Number 19, The Vacant Lot. This is one of the earlier episodes of the series, but it's one of the most memorable. Arnold and his friends are having difficulties playing baseball in the streets due to the cars going back and forth. It gets even worse when their baseball hits the traffic light and lands on a truck driving away. Huh, I wonder if Azumanga Daya was influenced by this. Arnold and Gerald are coming up with an idea on where they can play baseball without having to play in the streets. 
They found an abandoned vacant lot filled with junk and trash and decide to gather their friends to clean it up and turn it into a baseball field called Gerald Field. Everything goes great until the adults show up and take it over. The kids feel defeated because they were the ones who worked hard on cleaning the lot, and the adults won't acknowledge them being focused on playing checkers or planting flowers. So they teach the adults a lesson that even though they're older and have a higher rank above them, sometimes they deserve a chance to get proper respect. Seeing the adults rebuilding the vacant lot as a baseball field was very cathartic, especially if you watch it as a kid and you're seeing Arnold and his friends standing up against the grown-ups and winning in the end. While the first season's episodes are considered to be a lot more simple compared to the later seasons, they have a sense of relatability that makes them classics, and this is one of them. Number 18, Ernie in Love. Now we have an episode that focuses on one of the boarders, more specifically Ernie Potts. Previous episodes show Ernie as a tough, no-nonsense man who loves working as a demolition man. But here we get a more softer and sympathetic side, where he develops a crush on a plus-size model named Lola. He keeps following her, dreaming about her, building a sculpture, and writing poems. Arnold had been eyeing Ernie, and he tells him to confront Lola and ask her on a date. Ernie is very nervous since Lola is a tall woman with a high-paying career, while he's a much more smaller man with a job of wrecking buildings. Arnold explains to Ernie that if he acts like himself, then he'll do great. Ernie meets up with Lola and asks her on a date. She says yes, and they spend the day at the pier. Everything goes great until Lola brings up the unfortunate news. It's just that I'm large and lovely and you're, well, you're, you're different. You mean... Short? I'm sorry. It's not your fault. I'm just, you know, how would it look? (laughs) I'm so big and you're not so big. Ernie accepts it at first, but then he realizes that Lola was wrong and confronts her. You know what, Lola? It's not okay. When you look at me, you see a little man. But I'm not a little man. I'm a big man. Maybe not here, but in here. And I think that's what should count. I thought maybe you were the kind of person who could see that. But I I guess I was wrong. Similar to how Eugene goes bad paints a different picture on Eugene, it also does the same for Ernie. But in a way, we get to see a more gentler side of him. It's also a great episode for people who wish to go out with a person they feel is way out of their league for whatever reason. But as long as we show who we truly are as a person, and if they accept it, then you're on your way to a road of happiness. If a person cannot accept who you are, especially if you have no control over it, then they're not the right person for you. This is a great moral for a show aimed for kids. Number 17, Veterans Day. I already did a discussion slash review video on this episode, so you can go check it out for more details. But for a quick recap on the plot, it's about Arnold and Gerald thinking about what kind of activity to do during Veterans Day weekend. Arnold's grandpa and Gerald's dad come up with the idea of driving all the way to Washington, D.C. to watch the Veterans Day parade and get a slight appreciation of the holiday dedicated to the soldiers who fought in the wars and survived. We also get to hear their experiences of being at war, with both Arnold and Gerald being disappointed at their stories. But in the end, it all pays off in a wonderful way. This episode is incredibly underrated. Compared to all the amazing holiday specials that came out previously, this one doesn't seem to get the same amount of praise. But then again, the same could be said about the holiday itself. It's one that we take for granted because for many, it's just a day off or a day that's dedicated for soldiers only. But no, Veterans Day is a day dedicated to thanking the soldiers for risking their lives for our country so that we can be safe and secure. Nowadays, with everything going on politics-wise, this holiday and this episode is more important than ever. It deserves a lot more appreciation. Number 16, Freeze Frame. Here's an episode that plays itself like a mystery with some good build-up. Arnold and Gerald are watching a movie that they just filmed at the park on Arnold's computer, and they see a guy wearing a pork pie hat putting an envelope inside the hole of a tree. They go to the park and find a note saying to meet up at a certain location at a certain time with letter clippings. They decide to film a mystery movie to find out what the meetup is. They see Pork Pie meeting up with a companion talking about getting a man named Marty. Arnold and Gerald get even more concerned 
when they find out that they're collecting items like rope and whispering about a gun. This episode is great because it leads up to a lot of questions on why the men want to get Marty and how Arnold and Gerald piece the clues together. One of my favorite moments in this episode is Arnold using his computer to match the dial tones of Pork Pie's phone to retrieve his phone number. Now that's smart. The ending does lead up to a nice little twist that doesn't become too predictable, and it leads up to another possible mystery that Arnold and Gerald want to solve. Overall, this episode is a good one. Number 15, Chocolate Boy. Here we have another episode focusing on another character in a different perspective, but this time around, it's a minor character simply known as Chocolate Boy. In previous episodes, he's a little kid who loves eating chocolate and nothing else. But man, does this episode show that he is much more than that. Chocolate Boy is licking the wrappings of a chocolate bar, and the fifth grade bully Wolfgang looks and laughs at him because of his obsession. He decides to challenge Chocolate Boy for not eating any chocolate for two weeks, and if it succeeds, he gets 10 pounds of chocolate. Chocolate Boy asks Arnold for help, since he has a reputation of helping people with their needs. Arnold agrees while not knowing that this was all part of a bet by Wolfgang. Chocolate Boy goes through chocolate deprivation by talking really fast and licking ants. When the two-week deadline is met, Chocolate Boy receives his 10-pound bag of chocolate with Arnold thinking that he was going to quit completely. He was let down when he learned about the bet. But then Wolfgang and his friends mock Chocolate Boy by making him dance for malted milk balls with Chocolate Boy feeling humiliated. When he digs around for chocolate in a dumpster, he then realizes he has to quit chocolate for good. So he asks Arnold for help and they go on a long path to finding out why he's addicted to chocolate in the first place and how he can stop. I already talked about a similar concept in the As Told by Ginger episode, Stuff Will Kill Ya, where Ginger becomes addicted to the caffeinated espresso, the Moco Loco Frothinator. This episode is no exception on how showing how severe addiction is, but with Chocolate Boy, it's a lot more serious because we've seen him throughout the entire series eating chocolate and begging for it when it runs out. Plus, he's a little kid. Think about it, a little kid going through addiction that's overtaking his life, leading up to inevitable destruction. That's shocking. Again, being shown in a program for kids. But that's what makes Hey Arnold so great. It's not afraid to tell kids that even the littlest of them can go through the toughest situations. But with hard work and perseverance, you can be set free. Or find another addiction, whatever comes first. Number 14, Wayne Harold. Now we have an episode that really hits home for me. Harold participates in a bet with Stinky and Sid that if he eats 50 Mr. Fudgy bars, he would win a quarter from them. He won, and Stinky and Sid talk about how fat Harold is by eating all those ice cream bars at once. Harold decides to join a six-week cruise to lose weight, but because he was so worried about how everyone would make fun of him because of his weight, he becomes so stressed that he eats more food and ends up gaining more. Harold locked himself in his room, and Arnold decides to help him lose the weight. In the early episodes, Harold was a generic bully who's not very bright, and he uses his size to intimidate everyone around him. But more episodes later in the series, Harold is portrayed as someone with a good heart. For example, in the episode Harold and the Kitty, Harold befriends a kitten that he and Arnold found in a trash can. In the episode Hey Harold, he starts hanging out with Big Patty, a person who's very known for having a reputation for being tough. Sid and Stinky constantly make fun of her size, but Harold yells at them saying that Big Patty wasn't a stupid and clumsy person, but a nice person who doesn't deserve to be teased or ignored. Wayne Harold is a great episode that speaks to the people who are struggling with their weight, including myself. For as long as I can remember, I've always had difficulty with keeping my weight to a healthy range every time I lose it. I'm also a very emotional eater and have gone through depression and low self-esteem. So seeing Harold going through his weight issues made me relate to him a lot more. The ending where Arnold helps Harold lose enough weight to make himself feel happy is a great message that if you're happy with the way you look, you don't have to worry about what others say about you. Number 13, Haunted Train. In this episode, Arnold and Gerald are sitting in the boarding house steps feeling completely bored when Grandpa tells them the story of the haunted train. A mad conductor drove his train, Engine 25, so fast that it completely disappeared and may have possibly ended up in the underworld. Every year, Engine 25 appears in an abandoned train station where people are lured inside by eerie music. 
Then a strong smell of rotten eggs perfumes the train, and it gets warmer and warmer until they enter the underworld. Arnold and Gerald are intrigued at the story, but Helga doesn't believe it. Arnold makes a bet with Helga that the story is true, and that they're going to the train station and wait for the train to arrive. When midnight hits, a train arrives and they enter it. They hear eerie music, see flames on the window, and smell rotten eggs. They get more convinced that the train that they entered in is the haunted train. Similar to Freeze Frame, this episode has some great buildup and suspense. You wonder if the train that Arnold, Gerald, and Helga are riding is the haunted train because of all the things told from Grandpa's story is actually happening to them. Even when learning the truths behind the train, it makes a lot of sense and it doesn't feel forced. But the ending does leave that open question on whether the legend of the haunted train was true. Now here's a fun fact. Haunted Train was written by Josie Nerichio, the same person who wrote The Vacant Lot. These were not only the only episodes that she wrote for Hey Arnold, but for any TV show that she's ever worked on. She's mostly known for working in the sound department for movies and TV shows such as Newsies, Batman Returns, 28 Days Later, Training Day, A Series of Unfortunate Events, Birdman, The Sleepy Hollow TV Series, Blind Spot, Code Black, Game of Thrones, The Walking Dead, and many, many many more. It's a shame that she didn't write anything else after Hey Arnold, but nonetheless, she has written some of the best episodes of the entire series, and that's saying something. Number 12, Tutoring Torvald. The same way that Hey Arnold was able to turn Harold from a generic bully to a three-dimensional character throughout the series, Tutoring Torvald was able to do the same for a minor character in this one episode. A big math test is coming up for Arnold's class, and one of the classmates named Torvald has little to no knowledge of the subject, even though that he's been held back multiple times. The teacher, Miss Slovak, paired Torvald with Arnold to be his tutor. Arnold tries to teach Torvald math, but he doesn't seem to care too much about it. Torvald then invites Arnold to his house to continue studying, but it seems that his determination is still lacking when he doesn't pay attention to his teachings. Arnold walks away from Torvald feeling like he's wasting his time teaching him, but then he remembered meeting up with Torvald's mom earlier and how we got a C for his drawing, and how proud she was of him. Torvald wants to get a good grade and make his mother proud, so Arnold decides to help him in exchange for Torvald not beating up his friends. They both agree, and Torvald works hard to study right before the math exam. Similar to how Weighing Harold was an episode relatable to people who struggle with their weight, Tutoring Torvald is an episode relatable to people struggling to get a passing grade on a subject that's very hard for them. Without saying anything, we see Torvald's life portrayed. He lives in a rough neighborhood. His mother is almost never around due to her working at night. His father doesn't appear to be around, and he has no friends his age because either of them have moved on to the seventh grade or in juvenile hall. So he has no consistent role model to tell him what's right to lead him towards the right path. But we see he's not a bad kid. He's just someone who needs the right guidance from someone who will stay all the way until he accomplishes his goal. It's too bad that the writers didn't expand his story. He only appeared in another episode titled Mud Bowl, where he was called by Arnold and his friends to play football against Wolfgang and the fifth graders. He only played for the first quarter until he sprained his ankle. Then in the episode Big Gino, he was mentioned by name only, and that was it. While I would have liked to seen Torvald more, his presence in this episode left a big impact on me. Number 11, Helga's Makeover. Finally, we get to talk about an episode dedicated to my favorite character in the series, Helga Pataki. And trust me, this won't be the last. Rhonda is throwing an all-girls party and invites every girl in the class except for Helga. Helga doesn't care about it at first, but then when she bumps into a man thinking she was a boy, she changed her mind and gives herself a makeover to go to the party. Meanwhile, the boys are curious as to what's going on at Rhonda's party, so they decide to raid it. When Helga arrives, Rhonda and the rest of the girls are shocked seeing her dressed up and knowing tips about hair and nails. Phoebe then tells Helga that she doesn't have to fake liking doing makeup, dressing up, or painting her nails. She should act like herself. Helga realizes this when she sees Rhonda and the rest of the girls wearing an avocado mask to help with wrinkles and signs of aging. She flat out tells them about how much of a stupid idea it is. But Helga, this mask will help reduce wrinkles and signs of aging. We don't have wrinkles! Ugh. We don't have signs of aging! We're nine years old! I mean, look at us! 
tin foil in our hair, glass on our faces, high-heeled shoes? But Helga, this is what girls do. I mean, what could be more fun than this? Yeah, what, Helga? When the boys see what the girls were doing, they scream and run away. But they end up catching Harold and give him a makeover. This episode is one of my favorites because of two reasons. Number one, there are a lot of funny moments. Some of my favorites are scenes such as Helga purchasing the magazine and the makeover that the girls give to Harold. Number two, it teaches great lessons like being yourself and not following what everyone else is doing. Also, not to grow up too fast. They're nine years old and are trying to act like teenagers with having a makeup party. This episode shows that there are multiple ways to have fun that doesn't involve doing something that they're not old enough to do.